it's Sharon Kelly from the Berwick Public Library. One of my favorite things about being a librarian is meeting new authors and learning about their new books. Unfortunately, because of COVID, we can't have people come into the library, but thanks to the partnership with the Berwick Community TV, we can bring great programming out to you. So here with us today is Samantha Samard, here to talk about her new book called Scar Tissue. Samantha was here a couple of years ago introducing her brand new book called Stitches. We're looking forward to hearing all about scar tissues. So please welcome Samantha Samar. Thank you so much, Sharon, and thank you to Berwick Community Television for having me. Um, I'm here to talk about my new book, Scar Tissue. Um, I was here about two years ago to talk about my first book, Stitches, and this book is the sequel to Stitches, and um, I'm going to read the blurb off the back. Three months have passed since the mass art murderer terrorized the city of Boston. Army Ranger turned private investigator Jim Wolf and his partner Scarlett Vaughn spent the summer working cases and training their new intern Sebastian Cotroneau. When a campaign event for gubernatorial candidate Christopher Sullivan is disrupted by gunfire, Wolf and Scarlett team up with Boston police detectives Kaminsky and Silent Mark to protect Christopher and his family in the days leading up to the primary election. Meanwhile, CIA agents David Wolf and Diana Johnson unravel a sinister conspiracy at a mental institution. Jake Wolf struggles with the aftermath of the mass art murders, and Caitlin Sullivan tries to get married without bloodshed. But it's not a party until somebody dies. I've been writing since pretty much as long as I can remember. Uh, I learned to read when I was about three or four, and I started writing soon after that when I realized that the stories that I was reading, I wanted to continue them, or I wanted to see more of the characters. And I figured out ways to make my own characters and give them their own stories. And eventually, I just started writing all the time. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I like to think it's something I've gotten better at. <laughs> I graduated this June with my bachelor's degree in English and Creative Writing from Southern New Hampshire University. Uh, my entire program was online, and actually today I start graduate school at SNHU, um, and I'm looking to get my Master's of Fine Arts. In order to get my MFA, I'm going to have to actually write the third book in this series. Um, it's sort of the equivalent of a thesis for a regular graduate program. And I'm also going to earn a certificate in online teaching, so hopefully I'll be able to bring what I know um, and share it with prospective writers. Teaching to me, especially online teaching, where you have to be able to connect with people through a computer screen, um, I think the most important thing that I can bring to any classroom, but especially an online one, is a sense of connection, of being able to talk to people like they're people, not necessarily professor to student, but person to person, and talk about, you know, um, not necessarily what you can do better, but the things that you're already good at, and then the things that you can improve upon. Stitches uh, focuses on a character named Jim Wolf. He is a former Army Ranger, and he became a private detective when he came back home. But obviously, he still struggles with post-traumatic stress. And he's not necessarily the most sociable guy. He owns his own private investigative firm with his friend Scarlett Vaughn. And together, they get roped into this uh, murder mystery. Uh, this, this guy's been kidnapping college students from one school, and their bodies turn up all over the city of Boston. And nobody knows who's doing it, or why, or what the purpose is. So uh, eventually, they wind up working with the police to try to catch the killer before he kills again. And then Wolf's younger brother, Jake, is the one that gets taken next. So in Scar Tissue, it's been three months since everything had happened in Stitches. And to say that Jake is not coping well with what happened to him would be an understatement. Um, 
Wolf and Scarlet are doing their best to sort of return to their normal everyday life after everything that happened with the mass art murderer. And things don't stay normal and everyday for very long. Um, I don't want to give too much away, but Stitches was not the last that you've seen of the mass art murderer at all. Um, so the third book in this series is going to be called Wounded. Uh, it seems a little backwards, but once you actually get to read Wounded, you'll understand why I chose these titles for all three books. Um, I can't talk about it too much yet, but what I can tell you is that all your favorite characters come back, including the Mass Heart Murderer, and it sort of acts as a, a bookend of sorts for these three books for this trilogy but I am definitely planning on writing more books in this universe so don't worry about that the mass art murderer story will end but Wolf and Scarlet and Sebastian Jake and everybody that you've come to know and love will continue on so in scar tissue I introduce some new characters who work for a clandestine government agency called Project Renegade and they are actually getting their own spin-off probably after Wounded comes out um, that will focus entirely on them and what they do and all the crazy globe-trotting explosive missions they get to, to go on. I've lived with these characters for, let's see, it took me seven years from start to finish to get Stitches out into the world. And then it was two years later that Scar Tissue came out. So I've lived with these characters for almost a decade. Um, and I know them really well. And in a way, they know me. Um, I draw a lot of inspiration for my characters from everywhere, from other books that I read, from movies, television shows. Uh, I try to make each one unique, and even the supporting characters, I want them to feel like they're people, like they're people that you could meet on the street and, and talk to or have a cup of coffee with, and that they don't seem too, you know, one-dimensional, like just to the page, like they actually come off the page and into your life. Um, Jim Wolfe is sort of... Uh, how would I put it, the Joe Everyman of, you know, the fiction world. He's very down to earth. He loves his family. He was a soldier for a long time, and that's had a major impact on his life, both physically and mentally. Um, he's also bisexual, which is a, a subject that I feel like doesn't get talked about enough in mainstream literature and like the mystery suspense thriller genre. So the main genre of my books is most definitely mystery, suspense, thriller, horror. But I like to put in elements of romance and elements of humor where I can. Um, as far as romance is concerned, Wolf has had a couple of past romantic dalliances, I guess, with uh, some women in his life, with Caitlin and with Diana. But his current romance right now is with Sebastian. Um, and that's developing slowly. Some people tell me too slowly. But um, I want it to feel as organic and real as possible. And on the other side of the partnership, Scarlett is slowly developing a romance with Kevin, who is Caitlin's brother. And I can't tell you too much about where that's going yet, but it is definitely going somewhere. Scarlett Vaughn is who I wish I was in real life. She is an absolute badass. She's just, she plows her way through life. She knows exactly what she wants, and she's not afraid to go and get it. And she's sort of a counterpoint to Wolf's more quiet, sensible nature, and that's why I think that they work really well together. Sebastian is complicated. He's had a very dark, complicated life up until the point where he meets Wolf and Scarlet, and that's kind of when his whole world and his view of what he's doing and who he's doing it with start to change, and he starts to question 
pretty much everything, including why he keeps going along with his father's grand criminal schemes when he could be doing some good in the world. The Mass Art Murderer is a villain that is seven years in the making, and he was so fun to uh, develop throughout Stitches. And although he doesn't feature very heavily in scar tissue, he's definitely coming back and wounded. And I've had so many people tell me that when they read Stitches for the first time and it was revealed who the Mass Art Murderer was, that they were truly surprised, and that is honestly one of the best compliments you can get as a mystery author, in my opinion. My writing process generally starts with a core idea. So um, in the case of Stitches, it was the mass art murderer. And in the case of Scar Tissue, it was how I wanted to progress my characters forward after the events of the mass art murders. Um, generally what I do is I hate outlining. <laughs> I hate everything to do with outlining. But I will take a legal pad and just start writing down ideas for scenes, ideas for where I want the characters to go, um, maybe something I've had pictured in my head for years that I've never quite figured out how to translate onto paper. And then I start to put it in a progressive order. I don't worry about page count or how many chapters there are. I just worry about getting from beginning to middle to end in a way that makes sense. I tend to not worry so much about how many words I'm producing per day because I think putting that kind of pressure, I mean for me personally, putting that kind of pressure on myself is not good. It actually kind of hinders the creative process. I know a lot of people like word counts and like going, oh I write a thousand words a day or something and I think that's great. But I also think that what works for one person may not necessarily work for the next. and. I try to focus more on, do I like what I'm writing? Do I like how this scene's progressing? Is there something that I maybe want to save for another scene or take out completely? I almost always write at home, because home is where I feel most comfortable, especially in times like these. Um, where at home really depends on how I'm feeling. Uh, I can write in my office, I can write in my bedroom, out on the deck, it really doesn't matter, uh, the beauty of having more than one computer. But uh, I really try to write every single day, even if it's only a paragraph, at least then I know I've made progress forward. It took me um, much less time to write scar tissue than it did to write stitches. With stitches, I was, I feel as though I was building the foundation of a universe, which takes, in my opinion, a lot longer than um, a sequel. Um, with scar tissue, my biggest concern was that the tone and the pace and, and everything about the characters stayed consistent with the first book so that people could actually pick up scar tissue having not read Stitches and still understand the plot and the characters and what was going on, although I highly recommend that you read Stitches first. <laughs> Getting published is hard, I, I won't lie. It's, um, it is by no means a cakewalk. I decided to go the route of self-publishing for a number of reasons. Um, I sent out probably about 200 query letters for stitches, and I got 200 rejections. And then I started thinking, do I really want to hand over my creative license to someone else? And the answer was no. I really didn't want to, to give my characters and my ideas to an agent to then give to a publisher. So I decided, I'll try self-publishing. And it's not an easy process. There is a learning curve. It can be a very expensive process depending on what you decide to do and how you decide to market yourself. But at the end of the day, I think I've created something that's, to me, just as rewarding as getting published traditionally. If you're serious about writing and you would like to explore getting published, my advice to you is edit a lot. You may complete a manuscript and that's fantastic. Half the battle is completing the story. But 
you have to go back to the story and you have to go over it again and you have to go over it with a fine tooth comb and some people like to hire an editor to do this process or to help them in the process and I think that that's fine. Um, I actually have uh, sort of a control group of people that I give um, them my manuscripts and I, and I say, you know, what do you like? What do you not like? What do you think could be cut out? Uh, who's your favorite character? And that really helps me a lot in knowing what I actually want to put forth in the form of, a, of an ebook and in the form of a paperback. And it saves me a lot of, of grief in putting out something that I'm not totally proud of. Thank you again for joining us, Samantha. I am so excited to have your book part of the collection so uh, people can check it out for themselves. But thank you for telling us all about your new book. I can't wait to read it. Thank you.